The Brio X series smokeless fire pit is more than just a fire pit. It's a new way to cook delicious meals and bring the kitchen outdoors. In today's video, I'll be doing a review of the X-Series Fire Pit, the 24-inch model seen here that features a 5-inch steel plate built into the rim of the fire pit. It's perfect for cooking chicken, shrimp, steaks, scallops, vegetables, and so much more. I'll be covering the materials used to make the fire pit and the benefits of those materials. I'll also cover all of the typical features and explain how the unique X airflow system makes this fire pit almost completely smokeless. I'll answer some of the most common questions that come up like, how does it compare to Brio's double flame model? Is this a better option than the solo stove Yukon? Is it easy to cook on? And so much more. The body of this fire pit is composed of primarily core tin steel. And unless you're a structural engineer that specifically works with building bridges or other large structures, you're probably asking yourself, what the heck is core tin steel and why does it matter? The core tin steel is a name brand for what's called weathering steel, which as I touched on previously is used to build bridges and other large steel structures. This type of steel is meant to develop a stable rust-like appearance so it does not require paint but also doesn't sacrifice strength over long periods of time in the elements. In the fire pit industry this rust-like appearance is called a patina and is desired for its rustic appearance. If you've never seen or heard of a smokeless fire pit before, here's where you need to start taking notes. Smokeless is more of a marketing term here. This fire pit and others like the double flame and solo stove are mostly smokeless, under a few conditions. For one, there's always going to be smoke in the beginning, at least until you can get the fire going and a bed of coals made. Two, you need to be using the right firewood. A well-seasoned hardwood is preferred. Using wood that isn't fully dried out or has a higher sap content will make it more difficult to achieve an efficient burn. Something like white oak, or I think this is ash, uh, that's been seasoning for well over a year and it lights right up every time I throw it in the fire. Lastly, you'll want to keep the burn below the rim of the fire pit so you can achieve the secondary burn if the fire is big enough. That's where the holes along the inside come into play. Even when the fire is going strong, these fire pits are called 98% smokeless. There's a significant difference between these fire pits and your $40 Christmas in July fire pit special at Home Depot or Lowe's. Besides, after a few drinks, you probably won't even notice the remaining 2%. To get the fire going, I usually use uh, these cutoffs from some woodworking projects. It's, these are great fire starters, and if you don't have any of these, you can use something as simple as some charcoal and sticks you find in your backyard. Let's take a more look at this fire pit. In addition to the smokeless nature, there's a built-in sear plate and also the option to purchase the outpost system seen here. It drops right into the holes that are already pre-drilled into the sear plate and makes it easy to cook additional food items over the fire. My advice to people in the Brio Facebook group, which you should join, is to go with the X-Series even if you're on the fence. Even if you never use the sear plate on the X-Series or even the outpost system, the build quality of the X-Series versus uh, the Solo Stove Yukon or even Brio's Double Flame is still superior in my opinion. This steel is going to last a whole lot longer than the stainless steel options out there. Let's talk about the sear plate. It's a 7 gauge stainless steel plate that wraps around the top of the fire pit. And as the fire pit heats up, this ring caves in ever so slightly to pull any grease that may be coming off the food into the fire and away from your feet or your guests. You can see some of the grease stains where they have come through on the side of my fire pit. Don't worry, those go away. The sear plate is pretty easy to cook on, but there's a couple tips that you want to follow that I'll later cover in this video. The width of the sear plate measures 5 inches, and by doing some math, you have a total cooking space of about 384 square inches. This is equivalent to a 32 inch by 12 inch rectangle of space. Speaking practically, you have about enough space for 13 to 15 of your average size burger patties. 
I haven't checked the latest conversion rate for burgers to sirloins, but I can tell you, you'll probably have enough space to cook for you and your family and even a couple friends. Because of the heat, the surface naturally sanitizes itself and you can clean it as often or as little as you like. Most people end up scraping off whatever remains after they're done cooking. Otherwise, you can use some of the barkeeper's friend and a scour pad to get a deep clean. With a little elbow grease, it doesn't take very long to get the surface looking like new again. Secondly, let's look at the outpost system. Brio sells a separate outpost system in 19 inch and 24 inch models. You can use either interchangeably with the X series or the double flame fire pits. The mounting holes are exactly the same. What the outpost system gives you is additional cooking space to cook more meat, vegetables, or even hang a kettle of soup over the fire. The system is pretty self-explanatory and the height is adjusted using a screw. The outpost system can become very hot, so you'll want to use a pair of welding gloves or high heat resistant gloves to adjust, uh, to adjust in the middle of cooking. Here's some tips for cooking over the fire. If you want to see a complete list with links to recommended products, I've compiled a lengthy accessories list of 40 something items uh, you might want for your bonfire. So link to that in the description. For one, start the fire early. You want a base of coals that produces an even and consistent amount of heat to cook over. When the fire is going early on, the flames tend to fluctuate and it's difficult to evenly cook the food. Use a good hardwood. I've written an article on this as well, but in short, you want to use a well-seasoned hardwood like white oak. Hardwoods burn hotter, longer, and produce less smoke than softwoods. Softwoods do not burn as long and can produce more smoke that can mess with the food's flavor. This is not the smoky flavor you want. Get a cast iron. Whether you're cooking on the sear plate or over the fire with the outpost system, it's a little tricky at first. It's easy to knock things into the fire or have uneven heat. Cast irons take a little longer to heat up, but they'll help even out the fluctuations and temperature. And overall, it makes it easier to cook the food. Use tongs, not a spatula. Tongs allow you to grab the food instead of trying to slide under it. Plus, you get to test them out right before you use them every time. Prepare all the food before bringing it outside and have a small table handy. You don't want to be running back inside for a plate when the burgers are just the right amount of done. Get all the food laid out before bringing it outside and be ready to take it off the fire. It helps to line some baking sheets with tin foil and have a few extra plates handy. Accidents are inevitable. You're going to knock a few things into the fire by accident at first. So pick up a few extra of whatever you're cooking at the store. If you don't knock anything in, then great, you have something for lunch tomorrow. Clean the fire pit out each time before you use it. Getting rid of all the previous burns ashes helps to create better airflow for the next fire. I use a shop vac with my woodworking dust collector attachment. If you're struggling to get the fire going or the wood doesn't want to catch, use a leaf blower or air inflator to feed oxygen into the fire. With all these great things being said, and how much I love the X-Series, it does have its drawbacks. For one, you need to elevate the fire pit from the ground if it will be used on grass, a deck, or treated concrete. It gets extremely hot underneath, and will also sear the grass beneath it. Based off of people's setups in the Brio Facebook group, four pavers in addition to a heat shield help to dissipate the heat and protect the surface beneath it. Secondly, there's a learning curve to the cooking. It's not difficult, but it does take three or four times before you'll figure out how to best cook on it. Sometimes I'll need to rotate the food so equal amounts of heat get distributed, or I'll need to add another log closer to that area. There's a little bit of trial and error to it, so don't expect to be Gordon Ramsay within the first couple weeks. Learning is part of the fun. Third, I wish there was some kind of additional lip to the sear plate to keep from knocking food into the fire. While filming this, I managed to accidentally push in about four scallops, uh, a burger, and a small handful of sliced onions. Admittedly, I was overconfident and didn't think I needed the cast iron, but I think a small lip on the sear plate could make a huge difference. Just my uneducated opinion. Overall, it's a great fire pit. Easily the best one I've owned, and I don't have any doubts this 
one will last until my kids are entering high school. And I don't even have any kids yet. The sear plate is fun to cook on and really it's a fun twist to an otherwise routine task of cooking dinner. Not to mention the fire pit in itself is still impressive even if you're not cooking on it for the night. Compared to the solo stove's largest model, the Yukon, it's a no brainer. Even if you ignore the sear plate on the Brio, the build quality is all around better in my opinion. Just look at the weight alone. The Brio doesn't need a cover and it develops an attractive patina over time rather than the discoloration of the stainless steel you can see on my solo stove. You can see the pricing through the links in the description, but it seems pretty clear to me which will last longer and which I'll have more fun using. The Brio is manufactured in Pennsylvania while the solo stove is made in China. I work for an American manufacturing company, so the fact the Brio is made in America is a huge plus for me. However, I encourage you to do your own research, watch other people's videos, check out the manufacturer's websites, and join the Facebook groups to ask more questions. I try to cover everything I can here and be as unbiased as possible. Doing more research can only help you figure out which is best for you. Be sure to hit the like button below if you found this video helpful, and subscribe to my channel for future videos. In another video, I'll be comparing the Solo Stove Yukon more in depth to the Brio X series and doing a comparison between the X series and Brio's double flame model. And always remember, the best investment you can make is in yourself and the activities that align with who you want to become. So until next time, I'll see you later.